Welcome to Astrophysics. I'm going to show you some basic definitions and get going, but I, before that, I just want to take you on a quick little tour of a few really important terms that we're going to need to know. So first of all, almost everyone knows this, that's why I'll go quickly through this. Uh, we live on a planet, it's called the Earth. That's our home, right? It's the third planet out from the sun. So this is the sun, which is a big star. Um, and our Earth, it rotates on its own axis. Um, it, we call that a day. And each of those days makes up 24 hours. And each time it rotates around, it's called a day. Now, it also spins and goes all the way around the sun itself. So that's called uh, one year for the time it takes to go around, which is, you know, 365 of its own little rotations. That's why it takes 365 days to go around and do an orbit. That's called a year. Now, we're not the only planet out there. That's why there's, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of other planets in our own solar system. There may even be some extra ones. Um, they're looking for them, obviously. Um, so this is our own solar system, we call it, right? This is our system around our own sun. But of course, um, our sun is not the only one out there. There's lots of other ones. So the next sort of structure, out, if we sort of zoom out, the next structure, out, that's a galaxy. And this right here is what our own galaxy very likely looks like. We can't take this actual picture because you'd have to go too far away to take it. It would take you know, us uh, way too long to get this kind of picture. Um, so this is a drawing of what it very likely looks like. We're about two thirds of the way out. So us, us, our own sun and its own planets going around it, along with two to 400 other billion other suns, that's a lot. Uh, that makes up what we call our Milky Way galaxy. That's because if you see it in the sky, it looks like some milk sea being poured across the sky. So that's uh, the sort of next layer out from structure. Um, near us, we call this actually the local group. There's other galaxies that are sort of in our hood, so to speak. So this right here is one of the closest ones. Uh, this one's called the Andromeda galaxy. And this is a real picture of it. It's beautiful, I think. So the Andromeda galaxy is actually coming towards us. Um, now, no, we're not going to crash into each other, but we are going to eventually make, you know, a bigger galaxy. So we're actually coming towards each other. So this is what we call the local group. Uh, so we have some galaxies that are close to us. And then as we zoom out even further, um, we're just part of the universe. And in the universe, there are lots and lots of other galaxies like our own, which have billions of suns. And a lot of those have planets. So it's kind of mind blowing how big it is. This is actually my favorite picture. Uh, this is taken from the Hubble Deep field that's actually the extreme deep field so imagine then they point the this really amazing telescope to a really dark area in the sky and they leave basically like they leave it open for a really long time to get all the light in and in this one picture okay it doesn't look like very much it's not that exciting looking until you know what it is in this one picture it was one of the darkest spots in the sky that they looked for the longest period of time with the best possible telescope they could see this. Now, almost every one of these right here, um, shapes here is a galaxy. In this one picture, there's 5,500 galaxies. It's insane. Now, um, almost every single one of these right here is a galaxy. The exception is, do you see this little uh, bright dot right there with little spikes? So these little diffraction spikes. Uh, that's actually a star that's in the way. You ever try to take a picture and someone sort of photobombs you? Well, that's what's happening here. Uh, we can see another one right over here. But in this picture, look at these. These are spiral galaxies here, the sun from the sides. These faint, faint dots, those are also galaxies. So universe, pretty crazy, pretty big. We can't even my, wrap our crazy, puny little brains around it. But this is how it works. So let's uh, get started then. So useful definitions. I mean, what actually goes on inside a star? Um, I mean, my daughter, she only speaks Danish, which is kind of funny, but um, the one English song she can sing is this twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Now, of course, other than my crappy singing, uh, what is a star? Well, a star is just a big ball of hydrogen gas. This is actually a picture taken in really cool filters and a really cool type of image of our own sun. In fact, if you look carefully at it, this right here, uh, that is actually a planet. That's the planet Venus that's passing in front of it. It's called a transit. So the planet Venus is actually passing in front of our own star, which is kind of amazing. Actually, uh, I like really dumb jokes, as you know. Um, so I'm going to tell you my favorite pun. Are you ready? Yesterday, I was so bright, my father called me sun. <laughs> That's so dumb, but I love it. So yes, so what goes on inside a star? Well, you know when we say twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are? Well, what is it? It's a whole bunch of hot hydrogen 
gas. That's pretty much what it is. So if I go uh, like this right here and actually draw it in, so that right there is what's going on. We have um, inside it, we have hydrogen being converted to helium, right? This is the elemental, uh, this is what's going on. This is called nuclear fusion. Most people know that. So fusion, so every moment of its life, right now, every second, our own sun is converting the element hydrogen into helium through this process we call nuclear fusion. And uh, from other topics in the standard level syllabus, uh, you know about this, we go into detail about this. But the important thing, of course, is Einstein's most important equation, which is E equals mc squared. What's going on then is every time it converts hydrogen to helium, a little bit of mass goes missing. We call that the mass defect, right? If you weigh the left side, like the hydrogen before, and you weigh the helium after, you sort of weigh them. It's not quite that simple. It's a four-step process. It's called the, uh, well, one of them at least, it's called the PP cycle, right? <laughs> it means proton, proton. Uh, so that PP cycle, for example, it's not just, you know, hydrogen can convert to helium. It's a little bit more complicated, but essentially start with hydrogen, end up with helium. That is true. If you weigh the before and you weigh the after, the mass is not the same. Some mass went missing. That is the mass from this m in E equals mc squared. Then we multiply that by the speed of light squared and we get energy. And you might think, well, what are different forms of energy? Different forms of energy, uh, well, it explains the properties of stars, right? Because what's going on, it's converting this mass into energy. And this energy can be in lots of different forms, right? I mean, one of the forms of energy is, let's do it maybe in, yeah, we'll do it in dark blue here. So one of the forms of energy, well, uh, light. So that actually explains, oh, I don't know, why stars shine. So that's pretty amazing. It also explains, because uh, light is a form of energy, so is heat. So that explains why stars are hot. So it's kind of amazing, isn't it? So like mic drop sort of feeling amazing. That's actually why stars shine, and that's why they're hot. Is actually this process going on. So that puts a little bit more context to this dumb song that you know my daughter can sing, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Let's go a little bit further. Uh, we can talk about a standard candle. What does that mean? This means that when we're looking at distances to stars, uh, astronomy would be really easy if all stars were kind of the same. In other words, this is why this, this idea here holds. Imagine you had two candles. Okay, so two little candles, like a little Ikea sort of a tea light candle. Um, so you have two little candles and you had them, the same candles, you had them the same distance away. They would appear the same to you, wouldn't they? But if you took that candle, see that like in this picture right here, you took one of the candles and put it further, further away. Do you see that that flame would be a lot dimmer, wouldn't it? It would appear more faint. And that way, if all stars had all the same sort of candle, that's why if they all had a same standard candle, this is going to be so key, by the way. I could not uh, emphasize this enough. Uh, this concept of a standard candle is fundamental to what we do in astronomy. We try to standardize things. So the idea here is that if we had two candles that were the same, uh, then if we could you know, have one further away, it would just appear dimmer. And the dimmer it appears, the farther it is. So astronomy would be easy then. Dimmer stars are farther away. Boom, that's it. The problem is it's not that simple. See, this is, this is the idea behind it, though. See, that's why if you had a galaxy, it looked really faint, it would be farther away, right? That's this idea. That's why they put this sort of ruler here and try to say it. The problem is astronomy is not that simple because some stars are actually brighter than others. And you know, if you had stars the same distance away, some stars are actually more, they're brighter. In fact, we're going to use a word, we're going to say luminous. It's actually a better word for it. So they have a higher luminosity. That means they're actually objectively brighter. So there's these two effects we have to we have to understand. There's the actual intrinsic property of the star, which we're going to call luminosity. Um, and then there's this apparent result from us. In other words, um, if we look at this particular constellation in the sky, this is seen in the northern hemisphere really easily. It's called uh, the constellation. Do you know what it's called? Orion. It's supposed to be a dude. I don't know if it looks like a guy at all, but uh, I think it actually looks the most like what it's supposed to look like. Imagine this is his head. This right here would be his uh, shoulders here like this. This is his uh, body. This would be his legs. That's supposed to be his sword, but people, ah, it's something else. If you really use your imagination, you might be able to see some sort of bow because he's supposed to be a hunter guy with a bow and arrow. So he's supposed to be some dude like this. Uh, 
But the amazing thing is these different stars that make up that constellation, they're not all the same distance away from us. So that's why what I've done is I've found this nice picture here of the same sort of imagery here of this guy right here sort of mapped like this. They've taken these and sort of mapped out the distances to those stars. Now don't worry too much about the units yet. We're going to talk about those, but light years. Basically, it says that this particular star right here is actually closer. Then we've got this one here. That one's called Betelgeuse, for example. It's a red supergiant. We'll talk about it later. But you see how the different stars are actually different distances away. So do you see, a star could be really, really bright. Its actual luminosity could be very, very high, and it could be really, really far away. Or you might have a really crappy little star that's really, really close to you, and they might appear the same to you. So we have this effect of how things appear versus how they really are. And that's the main thing we're going to talk about in the next video.